My first thoughts on this new design is, wow, that's awesome. My second thought was, I hope it's not too much. But very soon into this run, I ended up loving this Thor cosmic look. We see Thor's hammer Mjolnir flying through space. Lightning flashes around the hammer, and it has the rainbow colors of the Bifrost as a tail. The narration alludes to the old king being gone. I have to guess it's in reference to Odin, as Thor is the new king and all father of Asgard. Mjolnir flies through Venaheim, the dark fields of Nidavellir, Jotunheim, land of the frost giants, on through the inferno that is Muspelheim, across Svartalfheim, home of the dark elves, even through Nivelheim, and finally Midgard, aka Earth. I really like that Mjolnir has an organic wooden handle. I think it looks cool. Also, I really dig the artwork. As you can see here, Tony, Cap, She-Hulk, and the Ghost Rider are battling some big creature that looks like they're, it's giving them a tough time. Krakowie! Mjolnir goes through this dude like tissue paper, even knocking out the big guy's teeth. Again, Thor utters, the old king is gone. Long live the king. Now, I dig this because you hear it when power is passed. You see it in a ton of movies. The king is gone. Long live the king. And, yeah, I just like the way it's used here. So... Of course, there's no mistaken Mjolnir. Tony and Cap, they see the inscription on the hammer, and, well, Stark wants to have a little fun by asking for a Sharpie. Who has a Sharpie on him when you're battling? Why? Why would you have a Sharpie? Does Tony have a Stark Sharpie? Does Cap? I don't know, but somebody must have. You'll see later. Now, I love this look. It reminds me of an epilogue to Jason Aaron's War of the Ten Realms with Thor, finally the King of Asgard with the eye patch, Odin's ravens, and the destroyer's arm. Can we take a minute to acknowledge that Aaron wrote Thor for eight years and even introduced ideas like Jane Foster Thor, which drove people nuts back in 2015. And the unworthy Thor, in my humble opinion, that character was more interesting by stripping power away from him and making him reclaim his name. Plus, he met Thori, the hellhound. He's probably my favorite character ever. Yeah. He's that good. All right, back on point. We see Sif, now the protector of the Bifrost, with the sweet, sweet sight that comes with it. At this point, Heimdall is blind, and I think this was before the War of the Ten Realms. I think it was against Mangog. Thor is showing off with his awesomeness. And Sif, well, she's kind of being a buzzkill. She's reminding him that he's a king now, and not a warrior, so he's got to put that on the back burner and, you know, do some king stuff. He's kind of like his dad now, and not the Thor we all know and love. Thor looks at his hammer, which somebody must have had a Sharpie. I wonder who. I bet it was Ghost Rider. I don't know why, but I think it would have a Sharpie. Anyway, in Sharpie, his hammer says, nice shot, enjoy your retirement. Sif tells Thor basically to buck up, because he wanted the crown ever since he was a boy. Thor agrees and acknowledges that he did want the crown, but he ponders to himself, what is a king to a god? Now this, this feels odd to me. Uh, what does he really even mean? Gods in the ace here don't need kings? Maybe a mayor? Councilman? Hmm. The mighty Councilman Thor. <laughs> uh, maybe not. I think king sounds better. But anyway, this reminds me of something Spock said in the original Star Trek. And I quote, After a time, you may find that having is not a, so pleasing a thing after all as wanting. It is not logical, but it is often true. I think Thor is having an issue with that with the crown. This brings us to the title page. Thor, The Devourer King, Part 1, The Black Winter. Written by Donnie Cates. Artist, Nick Klein. Color, artist, Matthew Wilson. Letter and designer, VCs, Joe Sabina. And cover artists, Olivier Coppel and Laura Martin. The Black Winter as a concept is, you know, pretty cool AF. I know a guy in this 40s saying cool AF is weird, but I don't really want to overuse the word dope which is my go-to, so there you go. Now we find out it's been a few months since the War of the Realms, and Asgard has, seems to be in the process of rebuilding. Thor has the throne under the world tree, I'm not going to try to pronounce it, and his ruin is carved into the tree. It looks great. Now here's the hard part of ruling is that you have to rule and address the concerns of your subjects. Because if not, you're just a dictator. Volstag is trying to address the necessity of restocking the booze cabinet for feasts 
and whatnot. But Thor isn't exactly feeling it at the moment. Fortunately, Volstagg knows how to read the room and makes a hasty exit from Thor's presence. Now Loki rolls in, as Loki does, and he kind of taunts slash shows concern for his brother. Loki prods him about a speech that Thor's going to deliver. And Thor basically says, look, I got this, man. You go do your trickster thing and make that Disney Plus show. <laughs> Which is super dope, by the way. And Loki points out to Thor that normally the speeches he does are for battles. And this is something different. He's got to speak to his subjects. And it's going to be a lot different. King Thor points out that since they are both kings and Loki is at his place, he should bow. Now, this is totally an alpha dick power move but it's Thor flexing his new king status. Granted, Loki is a king as well, but not of Asgard. He's the king of Jotunheim, the ice giants. Thor is basically saying, I have won the crown, and you better recognize that fact. Loki grudgingly does as he's commanded. Thor is basically saying, know your position, and don't come unless I bid for you, and threatens to use his ravens to rip out Loki's eyes. Loki asks, is it getting heavier? And he's referring to the hammer. Loki points out that he's never heard Thor grunt when he goes to pick up his trust hammer. Now, I really dig this because it shows just how close they are and more importantly how observant Loki is. Thor just lobs me on at Loki and stops it right in front of his head. Thor lets Loki know he's the Allfather and you Loki should remember that. Now Thor is about to address the people, you know, his subjects, and he's practiced this a lot in front of his hammer. And right about the time he starts to begin, the temperature drops like by a lot and space snow starts falling. I know it's not space snow, but it sounds really cool. Thor actually utters the words Odin's beard, which I guess is better than Thor's beard since Thor really doesn't refer to himself in the third person, so it would be my beard. Yeah, definitely not as cool as Odin's beard. I wonder if he says stuff like Tony's mustache or Strange's goatee. I digress. Boom! Here comes Galactus falling from the cosmos. It is a complete understatement to say that this is highly unexpected. Not only Galactus dropping in on Asgard, but he is literally dropping in. Of course, Thor's gonna do what he does best. He's gonna beat the holy hell out of his foe until they stop moving. Boom! There's the fireworks. Here's where it gets even more interesting. Galactus, who is basically a force of nature in the universe, asks, not demands, but asks Thor to stop. Furthermore, he's asking for his help against something called the Black Winter. So in a way, he's kind of going all stark on Thor with winter is coming. Galactus has been here for weeks, or at least maybe it feels that way. And Thor has been pretty quiet on the matter. What's worse is Galactus has brought whatever the Star Plague is back to Asgard, and it's affecting the World Tree. Little bits of it have begun to wither and die. As we see here, Thor sent his ravens out into the universe to find this group of people. They all have something in common. They have been the heralds of Galactus. I'm guessing Thor, his thinking is that these guys would have an insight on what the Black Winter is. Now the most well-known herald, the Silver Surfer, comes to the wall and lets him know that the Black Winter is the end of everything, like even bigger than Rack. Surfer and who I call Mr. Fire Skull brings up that Galactus originally was a man and pretty much confirms that they're all screwed because this is the end. Thor just wants to kill this thing. He wants to kill the Black Winter. But the Surfer clues him in on, a, on the fact that the Black Winter is a multiversal threat. He also says that Galactus has survived it twice. Once from a previous universe when he was just a dude and again when he crashed onto Asgard. Apparently Galactus has to eat five special planets. All five of them are beyond comprehension in its power, and the Surfer has kept this secret from his former boss because, yeah, he's a Silver Surfer. He's pretty cool. Now they all know this is a horrible situation, and they really don't want Galactus to eat any more planets, but there aren't any better options. And the Silver Surfer decides he's going to take the position of the Herald once more. And Thor is like, dude, I'm rolling with you. Thor is getting dressed for battle. He's remembering what Sif and Loki had said. Of course, the hammer still has Sharpie on it. Really? It's been weeks now, and Thor is just now wiping it off? He again says the old king is gone. This is such an awesome panel for a few different reasons. It is so consistent with Jason Aaron's run and the end of it with the uh, Ten Realms and that fire skull guy is there, which is pretty cool. Here's where it gets crazy. Thor demands Galactus to kneel. What's even more shocking is that Galactus kneels, or at least Thor thinks he's kneeling. Galactus explains 
expresses that he's impressed that the Silver Surfer seal these planets from him, you know, because they got that link thing going on. And Surfer just kind of conveys Galactus that Thor, you know, he's going to be rolling with them, and he's going to evacuate these magic planets before Galactus eats them. Here we see the kneeling was a bit of a ruse. And Galactus says that the Black Winter shows you your death, and he's looked at this thing twice now. Galactus says he's seen the Black Winter before once in a now dead universe as a man who couldn't comprehend what he was seeing. But now he sees the star plague. He sees his true death. Galactus sees Thor at his end, and he just blasts the shit out of Thor. Here we see Galactus's plan. He didn't come to Asgard by choice, and he wasn't seeking asylum or protection. He's basically keeping an eye on the dude that would be his doom. They're gonna go eliminate the Black Winter together, and at the end they're gonna settle things up. It's a very uneasy alliance. At the end of the speech and the energy blasts, Galactus commands Thor to rise as his herald of thunder. Now here is where we get a look at the Thunder God. This blast transforms him. He is now whole and his uniform has changed. Truth be told, it kind of reminds me of Goku powering up. You know, even if that is the case, it's pretty badass. I like it. I like it a lot. Well, this is the end of the issue and my goal is to do one of these at least once a week until we get current. I promise the quality will get better as I learn. And if you guys have any tips on how to do this better let me know also feel free to comment i'm not the biggest marvel authority so if i get things wrong just let me know until i post again fare thee well my friends